And with me now from Canberra is the Treasurer, Scott Morrison. Thank you very much for your time, Treasurer. G'day, Lee. Good to be here. You're five months into the job as Treasurer, and today in this major address, what you offered was a walk through the state of the economy and the challenges ahead. Is it logical for voters to start assuming that the Turnbull government doesn't yet have a comprehensive economic plan? No, because what I outlined today is that a number of measures that have already been announced and that come together to support the key objective of jobs and growth. I outlined the innovation statement. In addition to that, I outlined our response to the Harper Review, which is trying to fix the things in government service delivery, as well as improving at a microeconomic base the reforms that are necessary to drive productivity. We talked about the, the, uh, the, the free trade agreements. We talked about multinational tax laws that have been passed in the parliament. In addition to that, I set out the frame, the economic and fiscal context for the budget, and in that context, of course, in these very uncertain economic times, there needs to be sobriety, there needs to be responsibility, and we've been working through a very careful process to make sure that the measures we put in this budget are the right ones for our economy and the right ones for Australia. Yet, in the introduction uh, to the program tonight, I mentioned the comments Malcolm Turnbull made about needing to lay out an economic course and make the case for it, and that every month that went by was a wasted opportunity, and I also listed all of these economic areas where we're still waiting to hear your case, superannuation, negative gearing, income tax, bracket creep, industrial relations, to name a few. Are you missing uh, opportunities here by taking so much time to spell out your key policies? Well, we're, we're setting out what the problem is and what I've set out in, in the speech today is that the Australian economy is transitioning and what we have to do is back Australians in because they're the ones who are actually making this transition. Now, a big factor in that is being the increasing tax burden on people who go to work and earn money for a living and pay taxes out of those earnings. And uh, what we have to do in terms of restraining government expenditure, that is the best way to ensure that we can have a lower tax environment in the future. I mean, all the opposition that have announced is higher taxes. That's it. What you, you listed a whole series there. Superannuation, negative gearing, all of these things, all that is is higher taxes. That's all they've announced. Yes, but nonetheless, whether you agree with the content of what they're announcing, they are methodically laying out some policy ideas that are consistent broadly with Labor's values. Um, Which is you, higher taxes. That's your opinion of what their values are, well, higher taxes and more spending. But that's that, all they've announced, Lee, higher yes, taxes. But you can disagree with the content. They are at least laying out policies consistent with their own values. You are yet to lay out a comprehensive suite of policies. And while... Well, um, no, let me well, hold you no, up there. That's not what I've done. In, in the mid-year state last year, the last time we spoke, I, I updated the budget and I announced further savings and on further measures that ensured the budget remained on course of the, of, the, of the tractor surplus that we're working towards, which is based on expenditure restraint, not higher taxes. Now, our opponents believe higher taxes for higher spending is the path. What I'm laying out and the Prime Minister is laying out is that lower expenditure for lower taxes is the best way to support jobs and growth. Yet the public debate has been centering around the issues that Labor is um, announcing policies in negative gearing, superannuation and its campaign against the GST. Why are you letting Labor take the lead in these areas? Well, the only thing they're leading on is as a campaign for higher taxes. And that's not a campaign that I, I intend to join. Uh, I, I'm on a campaign to ensure that Australians are paying lower taxes. And if the government is able to make changes in some taxes that increase revenue, then we'll be directing that back into tax relief for Australians and for those who are earning, whether they be individuals or they be companies. And that's what our priorities are. We're setting out our priorities very clearly. Now, I don't, I don't intend to get into a competition with the opposition to see who can tax more to spend more. I, they're winning that race. Hands down. That is something that they're about and, and they can pursue that. But what the Treasury modelling showed was that if you go down a high tax and high spend path, it retards growth. It holds us back. And that's not what our budget will do. I mentioned earlier as well that when Malcolm Turnbull rolled Tony Abbott, one of the reasons he gave was that um, Abbott and Hockey had not established an economic message. But you haven't changed direction in any areas of economic policy. Oh, innovation policy was a massive uh, addition to the economic debate. It wasn't don't think a change anyone... in direction, though. No, it was a change in direction. There was not a substantive policy on innovation uh, prior to uh, Christmas, other than what we were able to deliver in uh, in November of last year. This was a significant uh, boost to the innovation sector with increased investment in a time where, where fiscally things are very tight. To show the priority of a billion dollars investment into innovation to drive innovation uh, in the private sector, in the public sector, this is a significant fillip for the economy. Okay, and other we're than doing innovation it then, other than innovation, growth. what are you doing different to what Tony Abbott and Joe Hockey did? 
The Harper Review, when we announced our, our changes to that, is we're embracing what is potentially going to be a competition policy productivity payment system with the states and territories but are you to ensure Tony that they're Abbott reforming and Joe the regulation. Have done that? No, that wasn't their approach. Does it strike you as odd today that the main thing for which you've tried to seek credit is ruling out a change to the GST, not for something you've actually done, you've sought credit for something that you haven't done? Well, no, all I simply did today, Lise, was explain the decision that we made. Now, some months ago, when, when the Prime Minister came into his job and I came into this job, we said we weren't going to play those Canberra games of rule in and rule out, which is so uh, popular in this building. And what we said, if we wanted to get rid of uh, rule out the GST on the basis of politics, then you could have done that last year. But we decided to to do the work to determine whether that would be a good thing to do by raising a GST to fund significant cuts in people's income taxes and whether after compensation uh, that that would be a boost for the economy. Now we found out that wasn't going to deliver that outcome and so on policy grounds we decided not to go ahead. Now the GST as a proposal didn't come up in terms of any government consideration until about August of last year when it was raised by the states. It wasn't raised by the Commonwealth Government. We looked at it seriously, we formed a sober con and considered view and we made a decision as a cabinet not to proceed with it. Now having dealt with that threshold tax issue we can now address ourselves and continue the work on the other measures with the objective of lowering the tax burden potentially for those on, on, on middle incomes who are getting hit by an inflation tax. The primary line of the coalition's attack against the previous Labor government was its overspending. Yet the Abbott Turnbull government still has spending at around 26% of GDP. You've, basically, you've had three years in office and you've basically done very little to cut spending. Well, spending as a share of the economy will fall to 25.3% in the statement that I released in, in December of last year. And many of the savings, the $80 billion in savings that have been uh, identified, the vast majority legislated, um, has ensured that the $70 billion in spending measures that have come onto the budget over that period of time can be paid for. But let me pick you up right there because, as you say, you've got $70 billion in new spending measures. You t today yourself said that the savings that you'd been able to come up with had been $80 billion. So you've mm. saved $80. you have spent $70 in new measures. How is that a good policy? Well, it's $10 billion better than we would have otherwise been. And I can tell you what would have happened if we hadn't identified those $80 billion in savings with the other additional commitments which have come onto the budget, the deficit would be far worse than it is today. It may and, be $10 and, and billion, dollars, but that is a drop in the ocean when you look at the size of Australia's G GDP and the sort of deficits you're looking at over the long term. And, and this is why savings measures... And, and, and resisting uh, the new spending is the message that I was sending out very clearly today. But your there government no... hasn't been resisting the new spending on the figures you well, provided the, today. The, the first budget of the Turnbull government will be released in May of this year. But and the what Turnbull I said government... very clearly oh, sorry, today... Sorry, sorry I'll let Can you, I just I'll let you finish. Yeah, sorry. Sure. The Turnbull government is not a new government, though. This is a government that has been in for three years. You're not a new government. Well, this is the first budget of the Prime Minister and myself as Treasurer. And what we are focused on is ensuring that we continue expenditure restraint and we particularly focus on ensuring new spending doesn't overwhelm the savings that we are making because only through lower expenditure are we able to deliver a low tax outcome into the future. Now that's a fairly clear point. It's a clear objective for the budget. My purpose was today to set, was to set the frame for the budget and that was the clear priority. But we're in an election year. When voters look at the record of the past three years of the Abbott Turnbull government, what can you point to as your economic record? The deficit's getting worse, spending's barely budged, comprehensive tax reform hasn't happened, comprehensive industrial relations reform hasn't happened. I mean, what are you going to go with as your economic record? Well, for a start, I mean, savings of $80 billion, Lee. Of which you've spent saving, 70. And, and could you imagine if we hadn't been able to achieve those $80 billion savings and the previous mob was allowed just to come in and keep recklessly spending well, as they were before? Well, can you imagine if you hadn't spent 70? Well, if you're suggesting we shouldn't have built the roads and the infrastructure and taken the 12,000 extra refugees, and if you're suggesting we shouldn't have been boosted our security uh, funding that had been uh, pared away by the previous government, well, you can make that case. Um, the, this government made decisions about better spending. A lot of that went into capital, which means the longer-term impact of that spending means that uh, over time that position would be improved even further. So all I was simply saying today is we've got to watch the new spending leap and that's one of the lessons of the last two years but we have been applied to the savings task. Our savings versus revenue measures to approve the budget is as at four to one. The opposition they are taxing higher 20 to 1 on their savings measures. So it's tax and spend under Labor or it's lower taxes and lower spending under the coalition. Treasurer thank you very much for your time this evening. Thanks a lot Lee. Good to be with you.